Good morning or afternoon or evening. I hope everybody is well. Not legal advice. Like, subscribe, comment. If you have questions, please leave them and I will I look at all questions. I I I look at them all and I try to comment on those where I can add something that I think might be useful, not always correctly, but I try that. Uh, so today I wanted to talk to you about a little bit about an arbitration update, MMTLP, obviously, and a little bit about an immunity issue, the issue of immunity that we've spoken about before. And uh, tonight I have a live stream with a, a famous neuroscientist, Dr. Ken Paller. So please tune in. Hopefully he will be providing interesting uh, techniques and strategies that we all can use. So I look forward to that. Uh, not legal ex advice. Do not uh, rely upon anything that is said here. Uh, hopefully it will stimulate you to think about these issues in a different way. Uh, before I start, and hopefully today's video will be short and sweet, but before I start, what happens when it rains cats and dogs? You need to be careful not to step in a poodle. How do hurricanes see? with an eye, of course. What happened to that cow? I mean, everybody saw that cow blown away by that tornado in Twister. Obviously, it was an utter disaster. And last but not least, what happened when the fog lifted in Southern California? Of course, UCLA. Um, moving on from there. So a little bit about the arbitration update and immunity. And first, I'm going to talk about immunity. And again, tonight, neuroscientist, famous neuroscientist, Dr. Ken Paller. Um, so immunity, we talked about this has been a problem because all the federal agencies and the SROs like FINRA have immunity. So it's difficult to get them to do things they need to do because they don't have, they don't see themselves as having civil liability. So uh, over the past six months, 12 months, there appears to be a movement afoot to withdraw certain rights that either uh, SROs or agencies have, like FINRA. And there's a couple of cases that I've talked about, Jarkesi, Alpine, Kim, that are currently being adjudicated where certain powers of these agencies or SROs are being restricted and pulled back. And um, this was in, I think, last Thursday, Wednesday, there was a case in the Supreme Court involving the Department, Agri Department of Agriculture. And it was involving the Fair Credit Debt Protection Act. I think that's the name of the act. And what happened was the Department of Agriculture apparently released some improper credit data about a particular uh, consumer. In the statute, even though it's Department of Agriculture and even the Department of Agriculture has absolute immunity in the statute dealing with the credit protection for consumers, it provides specifically a right for a private individual to sue for violations. So the court looked at that and said, you know, generally there's uh, immunity for governmental agencies and or they didn't say this, but it applies to SROs. However, if there is an express waiver, you know, where the government waives it, says we're not going to abide by it, that could be a, a way. And But more than that, if a statute indicates there's a right to sue, then that immunity is abrogated. And the court, the Supreme Court, uh, last week indicated that as to this Department of Agriculture and this Fair Debt uh, Credit Protection Act, because the act itself provided the right to sue, there's a no immunity for the Department of Agriculture. And I think this is the kind of another indication of the Supreme Court pulling back kind of petals, pulling them off one at a time. And hopefully, and I think this would be a ultimate solution to problems dealing with agencies, getting documents, et cetera, the SROs should lose immunity. It's been my position. So FINRA, there's no reason FINRA as a private company should have immunity. Like every other private company, if they have risks based upon their work, they would price that in and they would buy insurance. 
They should be treated no differently. They should not be provided the means to commit improper conduct. So the Supreme Court has kind of pulled back on immunity, has given Congress the right to certainly revoke it in statutes. So let's continue the process. And Congress obviously should be revoking the immunity of SROs like FINRA. There's no reason they should have immunity. So that's that. Uh, second, arbitration. So as some of you are aware, I'm involved in arbitration involving MM, uh, MMTLP and Fidelity that's been ongoing since about, I think I saw today, uh, March, April of 2023. I noticed when I look today, because I'm preparing a reply to an opposition that was filed by Fidelity's counsel, but I noticed today that there's 20 separate claims that I have made. 20 individual claims, which have not been dealt with at all by the arbiters of the other side. But I, I, the reason why I know there's 20, because I have to now raise it in a reply brief. But I've kind of reported on the arbitration as we go, and I've indicated my dissatisfaction with the process, and I bitched about the arbitration panel, and I bitched about the lack of discovery, despite the fact of the extraordinary circumstances. And because the U3 halt requires extraordinary circumstances, because FINRA's own uh, rules permit uh, broad ranging discovery, if there's extraordinary circumstances, I brought that to the attention of the arbitration panel who may have read it or not, but denied the request. I also provided some additional discovery where I requested documents from Fidelity as well as uh, I sent out interrogatories. Now, most of those were, without, I can't be specific about it, but most of them were asking for identities of people, et cetera, or documents related to the dispute. Um, they did not respond, or they, I, I, should, I should take it back. They did respond. They objected to everything and provided no, no responses, no answers. I filed two motions. Uh, they filed two oppositions. And this is all, so this is since we've last spoken, they filed oppositions to both motions. They also filed a supplemental response. So I think as I mentioned before, in FINRA, they give you lists of, of categories of documents you must produce to the other side, or your or presumptively you're supposed to present them to the other side. So FINRA provided me some group of documents, mostly useless account information, literally. The first time I provided them some documents and am going to be providing them some additional documents. Uh, they said in November, subject to a protective order, they would be providing documents. They goofed around with the protective order. Um, eventually it was signed and uh, accepted. A protective order means that Whatever is presented is protected from disclosure to the outside um, outside communities unless that par party also signs that same confidentiality non-disclosure agreement. And then they could look at it, but they can't talk about it. So they produced some more documents uh, after they filed their oppositions to my motion to compel, which is interesting. Uh, I don't think, and none of them, as far as I could tell, relate to the share count. I mean, they're still objecting to that share count, communications with FINRA, the SEC. Um, trying to think what else. Anything that I would say that was materially important, they did not produce. And they asserted some feeble objection. But with this panel, I don't know how feeble the objection is. But most interesting, I find, is... I've asked them for correspondence in, I think, I think I asked them for something like documents in 2022 where Fidelity couldn't buy a sell MMTLP shares, something along those lines. And I've mentioned before that I have a document and I'm aware, because I had a conversation, that as of, and it probably was before this date, was subsequent to this date, but as of November 15th, 2022, there's a letter from Ethics Compliance Department that says Fidelity can't sell MMTLP shares. 
And in their response, I can't tell you uh, what they said, but let's just say quite inconsistent with what I just said about the existence of a November 15th, 2022 prohibition. And I think they go beyond that, but I'm not going to discuss that. So we have a dispute about the existence of this November 15th document. And in my opposition, of course, I'm going to reflect on it. And the argument's going to be, you know, if you're not going to produce this document specifically called for and the material time, then how can we trust you to produce or have produced or have searched for anything? And also, doesn't that open up or shouldn't that open up the ability to conduct depositions? If in fact, Fidelity is withholding, destroying, or is unable or incompetent to pull documents, doesn't that provide further impetus to permit depositions? Um, I'm going to certainly make that argument, and I will make other arguments, but I was flabbergasted by the fact they still maintain that there's no November 15th correspondence, nor that they could, there was no time apparently where they were restricted from selling uh, shares of MMTLP, because I think that's to the contrary. Um, so, you know, if my if I thought that my arbitration panel wasn't completely in the tank, I think this these would be slam dunks. But, you know, as I've indicated before, for various reasons, uh, I thought this panel should have been uh, dismissed. So whether they're going to be fair or not, I don't know. But the issue remains and whether they they see it, whether the district court sees, sees it, court of appeal will see it. And it is evident. And I don't know why they didn't produce the documents. Again, I don't know what else they haven't produced. So the final hearing we have in the arbitration, the trial, is June of this year. In April, uh, so in a couple months, we have a, another, I guess, hearing where we're going to go over and bitch about what the other side hasn't provided. And we'll see if the court will make any rulings requesting further uh, compliance. Of course, I'll keep you apprised of the result of the arbitration as we go on. I'll keep you apprised of discovery and what is learned that I can disclose. You know, I'm subject to a confidentiality agreement, so I obviously can't disclose content. Um, but, but there's other ways we can talk. That's all I can say. I'll leave it there. Um, and I'm going to throw this part out here, and I've thrown it out before, and I'll just put it out again. Anyone who has fidelity evidence that they think would be useful in my arbitration or otherwise, feel free to reach out and contact me. Happy to, to chat with you. Others have reached out to me, so I'm happy to do that and uh, would appreciate the assistance if you have anything that you think would be helpful. So besides that, I don't think I have anything else to add this morning. To everybody out there, keep up the great work. Be well. See you tonight. Take care. Have a good day.